nou gaan ek oorskakel Engels toe, uit respect uit vir David Wilkinson. Welcome to 100.5 FM Radio Laafveld. David Wilkinson, the, the CEO of the Global Equipping Center and also an executive coach. Is that, is that a, a good introduction? That's it. That's <laughs> in a box. <laughs> <laughs> in a box. This whole morning we've been speaking about um, South Africa. It's, I mean, if I say words like load shedding, you get a question mark in your face. Obviously you know what it is, but that's not something you guys are used to. Not at all. No. Uh, and if I say something like, you know what happened? I lost my phone... Uh, or it was stolen, you know that that's familiar? Yes, very familiar. It's happened to you? Many times. Many times. <laughs> Unfortunately. Well, you have worse luck than the average South African. <laughs> I've only had my phone stolen once in, in my entire life, I think. So, you've got a story. We, we've, been, we've been talking this morning about it's not so dark to live in South Africa. We, we've got the mm. sunshine. Mm. Uh, we've got the great weather. We've got the growing economy, mm. uh, however slowly it might be. Uh, and we're looking to the positive, but something happened to you, David. Yes. Um, let's see. My wife is actually from Nelspruit. She grew up here for 28 years, so she's South African, along with my three amazing South African sons that we moved over to Chicago and immigrated. And um, what happened is I brought her back on this trip for two weeks. So this is the first time she's been back in country for 18 months. Oh, so you guys have been back and forth, and you haven't been in South Africa for quite a while. Me, no, me. Yourself. I come every every 10 weeks I'm in South Africa. Okay. But she hasn't been here in 18 months. Oh. So um, what happened was she went to the toilet in OR Tombo, and while she was there, she accidentally left her iPhone there. Now let me share with you just real quick what that iPhone meant to her. This was her first smartphone 18 months ago it was from me her first present in america so oh. she had all of her fo- all of her photos on there all everything that was personal for her she left there sentiment she, as well oh quite a bit and it was her pink and purple phone so <laughs> yeah. it was even harder wow yeah <laughs> who would want to lose that <laughs> <laughs> so she went back to spur and was eating with her friends and then realized that she left her phone and went back and it was stolen obviously it's gone it's gone obviously so, this is south africa welcome i know that's right welcome back so <laughs> she was so upset and i said listen accept that it, it's gone forever it's okay if they needed it that bad they could they could steal it it's okay and we we kissed the phone goodbye yeah that's it you make peace with it it wasn't on a cloud so you couldn't you couldn't trace it you couldn't see where no, it was so it was it was literally gone it was gone and then something bizarre happened that i could have never expected on monday i got a uh, sms from Mandla down in Durban who said, listen, my colleague found this phone. He gave it to me. I said I couldn't give it to any of the security at OR Tombo because it wouldn't get to its rightful owner. Um, please give me an address to ship it to. And I was thinking, mm. uh-huh, an address. They want to come find uh, out yeah. who I am. Yes. And he actually shipped the phone. DHL took a picture of the package, and it's now going to meet us in Pretoria. So I am in a little bit of shock, but what a great story. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Go back a little bit. <laughs> so so your, your wife lost a phone. Kiss her goodbye. Very sad. It's the pink and purple one. This, yes. is, this is the one. It's gone. It's lost, gone. Lost in the bathroom, and someone took it. When she went back, it's not there anymore. A couple of days later, you guys are in, uh, in Nelspreet. Mm. A day or two later, mm. someone phones you. They found out somehow who the owner of this phone is. Yes. Or, or this, he sends you an SMS. Yes. Mandla. Yes. And he says, I'm, I want your address. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Red lights. Yeah, flashing. That's right. All right. Then he sends you the phone. Yes. He pays. He pays. For the phone to be sent to you. It gets even better. Because There's I, more. I, I sent a, a, an SMS to Katie's phone. Saying this, if you get this phone, here's my phone number. My name is David Wilkinson. Oh. I will pay you a reward. So when I offered to okay. pay for... Okay. Okay. Listen, I offered Mandela two things. I said, listen, I'll pay for DHL. And he said, no. I said, I'll give you a reward. He said, no. He sent it all for free. And see, this is the That's one of it. the key reasons why I continue to come back 
and have lived in South Africa for seven years and have the belief system that the best days for South Africa are ahead. You can never use the word all. Listen, every person I know that I've met here has had Mm. some problem with crime or corruption or something stolen from them, and they're so grieved to stay here. And they say, you know what? It happens to all of us and all people, and and, and they get on this bandwagon of negativity. Yes. And the problem is is once you get in a critical and cynical space, you lose the light. At the end of the tunnel, of course, <laughs> and it's going to happen to you because you attract it. That's but right. We, but we'll uh, we'll get more into the attracting and and pushing away certain things in a couple of minutes' time. So you come back to South Africa every time. You've had things stolen from you, taken yes. away, and yes. I remember at the last seminar you said that you were you were happy about a shirt that wasn't stolen. The cufflings were stolen, but you were very grateful that the expensive <laughs> shirt you brought with. Is that a South African way of thinking? Would you think like that in America when your, your shirt's still there but the cufflings are gone? Is it then? Is it theft or is there a light at the end of the tunnel? No, no, no. In South Africa, I was thankful that they didn't steal my shirt because I have a South African mindset now. But in America, I'd be upset that they stole the cufflings. <laughs> um, and obviously things like we spoke about load shedding. It's, it's quite mm. it's quite bad at the moment. Uh, it's going, going quite hectically. But um, it's also not all the time. Do you get used to power outages? Um, you, you know what? It's really unfair to ask me because I only stay in places that have generators. And okay. I usually eat at restaurants that have generators. But that's the thing. We adapt. Yes. We, yeah, we adapt and we live with what we have. You're the best. Uh, I, I didn't tell you that I was going to ask you this. The best thing about South Africa. Oh, by far, it's the people. I, I come back to South Africa every 10 weeks because there's amazing people in South Africa, and I can't stay away. Um, my second reason is Nando's. My first reason is the people. <laughs> Everyone knows that. Who knows me? I'm completely addicted. I give them credit. Their, their chicken's amazing. But really, I come back for the people first and the food second. So no no South Africans, the sort, same sort of people in America? No. no and no, no Nando's? No, no, no. There's there's nothing like South Africans. And it's it's not just because they're so hospitable. It's because they love to do business. They love the culture. They love, you know, to actually help other people. And when they double their company, they will help their staff. They will help more people. They will hire more people. And the next thing you know, you start a business revolution with positive business people instead of people that complain and moan about their situation. They're doing something making about Making a it. difference. They're making a difference. Is, is that why you keep coming back to South Africa? Because – and that's why you know. Let's, let's get into who David Wilkinson is after hearing the, the positive story. What do you do as a business or as an executive coach? As an executive coach, we focus on entrepreneurs, business owners, and executives who are serious about personal and professional growth. You will be surprised at how many people actually don't want to grow. They say they, they want to grow. They, want they think to, yeah. they want to grow, but when you come up with a real an amazing strategy with them, they say, oh, yeah, it's too much hard work. And you say, <laughs> it's painful. Growth it's is pa- painful. It is yes. painful. Yeah. But you know what? Here's the thing is so many of our clients last year doubled their revenue. We had another three companies that doubled their revenue, doubled their turnover, not doubled their staff, <laughs> not doubled their expenses. <laughs> <Staff turnover. laughs> that, not that, that. We're talking about revenue. And they were so thrilled because they were prepared for that. And you won't get they got to do. They were so wise with their finances that they were actually able to take a great family vacation at the end of the year instead of looking at zero bank accounts at the end of the mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. And that's wow. what gives me joy is when they can bless their family and their staff and say, listen, everybody, let's take off and let's have a great holiday season because we had a good year. And who doesn't want that? Everyone yeah, wants everyone that. Everyone wants that. Um, you're also a, a an author, yes. a published author. Yes, actually, my first book um, was published in Cape Town in uh, May 2010, which is on creating momentum. And in fact, speaking about creating momentum, we have a workshop coming up on October 14th here in the Lowfelt in Mna 20. We'll definitely uh, keep contact with you as, as to what's happening and what to expect and so on. So, so the book is it going well? It is. We've sold over. About 6,000 copies now. And you, you have a different marketing strategy with, with <laughs> getting the book sold. Yes, we don't use any bookstores. We don't use word any of marketing. Mouth. It's all word of mouth and at our seminars and courses. And we just say to people, this is the only place where you can purchase the book. So they buy it. Exclusive. It is exclusive. All right. Um, David, we're going to speak with you again. Unfortunately, 10 minutes went by like this very, very quickly. <laughs> 
Fourteenth uh, of October. Looking forward to it's 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 on it's on the topic of the book, is it? Yes, yeah, the, creating momentum. The thirteenth is on is a business breakfast on the millionaire networking mindset, and that's in the morning. And then the the seminar, the workshop is on creating momentum, how to create momentum personally and professionally in your personal life and business life. That you don't have to work so hard at marketing; your business works for you. Um, your best Afrikaans sentence before we say goodbye to you. My, my, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to do this. My to you. best African sentence probably the schoonlapper is heel. That's actually brilliant. That's very good. Uh, who taught you? Obviously, I was a bit skeptical about this because um, a lot of South Africans have a dark sense of humor. And when an American comes to South Africa, the very first words they learn aren't really family friendly, if I could call it that. Uh, who taught you a bit of Afrikaans? No, my next door neighbors actually did that to me. They told me <laughs> that um, that uh, that Bluxem was hello and Donner was goodbye, and I did it for six months before somebody told me that's not what they really that's meant. That's not very nice. No, but they <laughs> laughed so hard when I found out and found out what they were telling me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, David, it's uh, it's an absolute pleasure speaking to you, and unfortunately, we only have a little bit of time. But wow. It's great to meet you, and it's great to have you come and visit us again. Please. Thank you. Look to talk to you hopefully in October. Yeah, definitely. We'll be there. The Millionaire Networking Mindset, presented by the Global Equipping Center. The event consists of a 45-minute talk by international business speaker David Wilkinson and includes a full buffet breakfast. To register or for more information, please click on the link below. International speaker and global executive coach David Wilkinson will be speaking on creating momentum for your business. The workshop includes a full color workbook, refreshments, and lunch. To register or for more information, please click on the link below. Thank you for your time and the GEC team is looking forward to meeting you there.